Hello. Well, today I will give my final retrospective of the final installment of the Star Wars prequels. And from this box set, again, talking about Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. A film, even people who are not fond of Episodes 1 or 2, or both, even they say it's good. And I love this, and I think this film is the best of the prequels. Um, I think the story just got better with each film. And uh, that's, a, that's one thing I always look at for films, and particularly a series of films. I hope the story, if there is one, gets better with each installment. Um, and with this, I think the prequels really succeed in that. And the way it ties up with ep to episode four is really incredible, and I love it. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, the way everything turns out with Obi Wan and Anakin fighting at the end, and also the duel with. Yoda and Sidious, and also I didn't even say in episode for the episode two one, Count Dooku. You know, I I meant to, but I wanted to focus a lot on the whole dialogue and stuff and how all that because overall, like I don't know, people really praise Christopher Lee's performance, and um, I even mentioned Darth Darth Jar Jar, but I also did want to expand, but uh, I don't know, I didn't want to keep. I always want to try and make these videos as short as possible, but I sort of ramble and I on about one thing and then my brain switches to another and I apologize, but hold off for episode three for one moment, but Count Dooku, yeah, he kind of comes out of nowhere. No mention in episode one, no hint of uh, Qui-Gon's master. Turning to the dark side. Well, then again, I guess maybe after his death he could have, but that isn't necessarily explained in episode two, at least not the film. Maybe in the books and stuff, you can find that out more, but just going for the films, yeah, you, he's come out, he comes out of nowhere. And regarding the Darth Jar Jar thing, you know, he could have been the replacement he had, you know, because now he gave up on Jar Jar having a lot more screen time than he did in 2 and even in 3 George Lucas needed a, another villain so instead of having a big reveal that could have been better than I am your father he had Christopher Lee come and become Count Dooku and uh, he was really good even with the lack of character development or even you know some that criticize that is the character, or at least how it was hand, the character was handled, was lack of story develop or character development and lead up to the character being this big surprise of a guy who's you know working with the Sith, but was a Jedi, was with the Jedi, and then also how what he says to Obi Wan Kenobi when he was being held on Geonosis, how when you actually listen to how he's saying how. Things are going and no, things are in motion, and uh, wanting Obi Wan to join him to help take down the Sith, but Obi Wan not believing it at all. You know. You know. Yeah, it's it is it is something, and then in Episode Three, he's in there at the very beginning, and then Anakin kills him. Which is another step to the dark side. Which he shouldn't have done so because he cut off his hands and he was unarmed. You know. Uh, when Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin go to save Chancellor Palpatine. Who was kidnapped. Um, you know. Um, yeah. You know, you and McGregor... I didn't mention him much at all. I just talked about Obi Wan. I yeah, I didn't really talk about him at all in Episode Two because I was too busy with the whole Jar Jar thing and 
Hayden Christian, the whole love story angle and stuff. But Ewan McGregor, I, he has always gotten better with each film. He got better as playing Obi-Wan, and he really became the character. Like I, You believe his Obi-Wan becomes Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan by episode four. And, um, you know, there's going to be a miniseries of Obi-Wan, what he's doing between three and four, so that will happen. Uh, hopefully it will be good. I gave my thoughts on that last week, but anyway, uh, I really apologize for not uh, saying much, but I don't know. I think it's one of those things that Ewan McGregor does such a great job in Star Wars and all of his films, really, and all of his roles. That's like, you know, he does a good job, and it's like, you know, sometimes you just don't, know, there's nothing really to say, just watch the film, at least watch his performance, and it speaks for itself. Um, Hayden Christensen's performance, I think, is even better in this film. I didn't mind him, as I said in episode two, because with the genre that Star Wars is in, being space opera and idyllic writing, though it was more heavily present and sort of hit you more on the head of the kind of writing George Lucas is used to, you know, that did turn off some people with it, like, oh, this isn't very good, and this and that, you know, the, 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 this, the writing here is a lot better, there are some romantic moments with Padme and Anakin, again, they may not be the very best, but I think they're handled better, also, you know, their now husband and wife got married at the end of episode two, um, and he, you see uh, him, uh, his performance, Hayden Christensen's performance is better. Um, particularly when you see moments where he doesn't talk. I, I, I always, I've noticed that people say he, he's really great in Star Wars when there's moments where he just doesn't talk. But I think he's actually great in Star Wars, honestly. I mean, and even you know, Episode Two, he's really good. If there's anything, it got, gets awkward when he's with Natalie Portman because of how the characters bounce off of each other with the dialogue. It's kind of it can turn off some people um, in terms of the believability. That's what I mean by turning off. I don't mean like you know, but it can turn some people away from the story because of how hokey or cheesy the dialogue can get. But, you know, that also sort of is like a sort of also a charm to Star Wars. Um, uh, you know, Hayden Christensen did a lot better. As did Natalie Portman, I think, even. Even though she doesn't, she's not really in the action as much as she was in episodes one and two because, you know, she's pregnant. And also the way uh, he reacts to her saying, She's pregnant is how anybody would really react to that. He's like, yeah, that's wonderful. But there's obviously a concern because he's, he's a Jedi and he, you know, he, he's first off, he's not supposed to have any emotions. He's not supposed to feel love and all that. But also now he's going to have a child. That, that, that's like, oh, uh, well, like, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? Like, things will be fine. And, it says Anakin, everything will be fine. You know, it's gonna work out. We're gonna work this out. So that doesn't happen. Um, and I think that some people thought it was. They were, I've seen some people think that the it was rushed for his transformation into Vader. But honestly, you see, he's really nailed in this whole system of how the Jedi way is done and all this. And for him, he snaps, and because he sees Mace Windu, he's going to kill Palpatine. Uh, you know, he's a Sith Lord. You know, that's revealed. Uh, and how he, uh, he, he's too dangerous to be kept alive, but, you know, Anakin says, you know, he must stand trial, you know, must live, and all this. You know, there's like this, not the Jedi way to just kill someone. You know, like that. Uh, 
So seeing this and how we're like, oh, you know, the, 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 there is no difference between a Jedi and a Sith, essentially is what he seems to uh, conclude with that. With Mace Windu going to kill Palpatine, there's no difference between the two. So who's to say I can't go to the dark side to try and learn how to save Padme's life? Because, you know, he has nightmares in this film about her dying during childbirth. Just as in the previous film, he had visions of his mother being tortured. Now it's his wife he sees dying in his dreams, and he's not—he doesn't want that to become a reality. And he's doing what he can, and it's just—it's actually sad to see how Anakin's a good man, but he then does terrible things. All for some of that's. When you look at it, it's well, he wants to save his wife. He wants to live with his wife. He wants everything to be fine and have a normal family and be able to do just so many is what a normal family would do. But because of all these things that happen, he goes to the dark side and he he makes these. He makes a terrible decision, but it's also what needs to happen because of the original trilogy. If he, this didn't happen, you know, then the, then the OT is like, well, then what was this trilogy for? You know, he's supposed to become Darth Vader. Um, so it might seem to be a bit rushed, but in the grand scheme of things, when you actually look at it from the big picture, it there were certain things ins installed into, but not installed, but nailed in, like sort of nailed into him. About this is the Jedi way. Or, do this, do that. Don't do this. Don't feel this emotion. Don't feel that emotion. You know, this and that. Uh, you know, and. All these things conflict him because he wasn't a baby when he was. He wasn't raised to be a Jedi from being a baby. You know, he was nine when he was. He went to Coruscant and all that to become a Jedi. Uh, and all of that culminates into how ev ep everything happens in the original trilogy. Set begins, things begin to get set up. In episode two, with him killing the Tusken Raiders and being angry, and then wanting to save his wife. Uh, that's what leads him to the dark side. And uh, to see how uh, the, you know, to see how Anakin and Obi Wan's friendship and relationship has brothers and everything turns out and it's just to see how much they loved and respected each other like brothers and then for all that to fall apart in the end it's very sad and then to see Ewan McGregor give the performance he does at the end when he's saying to him that he was the chosen one and he was you know it's like he's supposed to destroy the Sith and not join them yeah. and all that, that you 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 really feel that performance like he, he he truly means it in that moment like he he and says like how I mean Anakin says uh, he hates him and he goes you're my brother Anakin I loved you and how he you know in a way that also sort of acknowledges that even Obi-Wan he embraced feelings when he shouldn't have he loved Anakin like a brother when Jedis are never supposed to have any emotion to or connection to anybody beyond Master Prentice. You know, that's as close of a relationship or bond you're ever supposed to have. Nothing beyond that. Nothing like your brothers in arms or anything like that, even though with the Clone Wars they were. You know, they did a lot of, they went on many missions together, and individually, but all of that, 
all of what happened and the prequels that culminates to that it's in that moment it's just very sad to see um in episode two Anakin says Obi-Wan's like his father but in episode uh, three it's like well no no not so much he's not like his brother he's like you know they the way they bonded and teacher and student and everything's like it's like a sibling thing not like a father and son sort of bonding it's not a brother of bond and just to see how it all culminates and ends it's very sad which is what it should be it's supposed to be sad to see Anakin a good man with good intentions doing the wrong things for good intentions to become evil and people are like you know like oh Anakin truly died when he kneeled for Palpatine and then some argue after hearing that Padme had died that's when he died and it's an interesting discussion uh, I've gone back and forth honestly with what I how I what I think about that um, it's interesting to think. I've never really come to that con uh, any sort of conclusion, but it's it, definitely interesting to think about. Uh, he he loved his wife and just wanted her to be okay because you know he did choke her and he thought Obi Wan turned her against him, and then he said, "You know, you did that yourself." Like all these things were, he told her how he killed young ones, you know, young Jedi. And how he saw recordings of it, and how the Dark Lord is there, the Dark Lord of the Sith was right there, and on her eyes, and everything, and how everything culminated into how how it did, and it's just it is quite sad to see. It's un and in many ways, it's unfortunate how all that happened. And it also, in a way, it's also necessary because also, you know, we have four through six. This has to happen. Padme was not in the original trilogy. She has to pass away. After she gives birth to the twins, she says to Obi-Wan, they're still good in him. And then she dies. And that's sad. It's sad that that's, you know, and her final thought was about him. And you can argue Anakin, Anakin's true final thought was of his wife and then he was angry that, like here like she's she's died she died and also some say like how, how would Pat, what, how would Palpatine know she died it never was you know broadcast yet that to the galaxy she had passed away how would he know and there's people saying like how Palpatine Palpatine drained her life. He drained her life using the Force and then gave it to Anakin because he was dying. And no matter how well that suit could be, no matter how that would be built and would help Anakin to survive, the, he he was dying. Got his all but one limb cut off he was burnt he was dying needed uh, some sort of assistance to live so Palpatine drained the life out of Padme and gave that to Anakin through the force and then he fully embraced Darth being Darth Vader and uh, after that and so, in a way, what Obi-Wan does say to Luke in Episode 4, that Darth Vader betrayed and murdered his father, uh, Luke's father, is true. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, some say there's some inconsistencies with this trilogy, with the originals. Um, I don't think there are a whole lot. I think some, you know, I'm not saying there are none, it's not completely consistent of what is said or done in the prequels, but or in the original trilogy. But I think, in a way, like if 
you know, there are, I think, they're very, they're really like, um, they're sort of blown out of proportion in a way, if that makes sense. Like, they're just made out to be, you know, seem to be bigger problems than they really are. And, um, yeah, that's, it, it's just, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, you either love the prequels or you don't. I love them all. I've done my best to try and say why I love them in each of these uh, installments. And maybe I should have done all this months ago, but I wasn't thinking. I just wanted to do The Phantom Menace and talk about that and how I enjoy it. But then I thought later on, maybe I should do episodes 2 through uh, 6 since I haven't really talked about those individually, and I'm going to talk about Nine when it comes out. Uh, so I thought, you know what, why not just do the do the rest of the prequels and then the original trilogy. I hope you'll forgive me for any and all scattered brain I have been for these two videos. But I really wanted to get them out, because I really enjoy these films. I love Star Wars. I want to see Star Wars continue to be good, and I'm not the biggest fan, as you know, of the sequel trilogy. Um, uh, can Episode Nine be good? Sure, it can be. I don't know if it will be, obviously. Obviously, nobody does. I hope to be entertained. I will say that. Uh, then again, I hope... Uh, that's my hope for every single movie I ever go and watch. I want to be entertained, regardless if I moved as I watched the film. That's completely different, honestly. That's that's like a bonus, if, if anything else. You know, that's a bonus that I I I moved. You know, in Star Wars, the first six in particular, I I always love the story. I love the characters. I love how it all, the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy are. They come together, and if you watch them one through six, you can see the story unfold. And there are a whole lot of inconsistencies, I don't think. Um, but maybe you do. Maybe you're not fond of the prequels. Maybe you just like the original trilogy. Maybe you like the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy so far. Maybe you like everything of Star Wars but the prequels. If so, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video at least. Um, and the previous ones. Well, these retrospectives for the prequels. And yes, it probably could these probably could have been a lot better, more in depth, but I don't wanna bore people. I don't wanna take up too much of your time and make you think, Oh, well, this guy just shut up. He's this is annoying. I don't want that. I just wanna give my thoughts. So many other people do, so why can't I? And I think video is the best format for myself to do so. And um, I hope you found this to be enjoyable in any way. Maybe informative, but I don't know how it would be. You, some of the stuff you probably already knew. You've watched the movies, but maybe the pers your perspective was different from mine. Maybe you don't like it, or maybe you like like this film for different reasons, or the other prequels for different reasons, or you don't like them. I don't know, everybody uh, has different thoughts on it, and um, and next week I won't do the original trilogy just yet. Uh, I want to save those for uh, November, because uh, I don't know, I, I watched a new movie and I want to talk about that soon, and so other stuff, but you know, I and in October, I want to just talk about all the horror films. I want to talk about horror movies. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, and I'm just going to finally do it. For four weeks in October, four Fridays, I'm going to talk about some horror movies. So, this will be... So, I got Star Wars fix for a while out of the way in November... Hope you'll want to see 
that again. Uh, Star Wars again. So, hope I haven't wasted your time too much here. Um, but just want you to know that, you know, again, like October. coming up and yeah I just hope you'll appreciate the little break I'll give you for it's not completely just Star Wars so anyway I hope you will all have a good day have a good week have a good weekend also and I hope you'll all just yeah have a good time uh, doing whatever hope you enjoyed this video Apologies again for the almost half hour video, but you know me, I I, I, I tend to talk a lot, and I uh, hope you forgive me. So with all that, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.